That's the keto flex. You hold the back of your head. So we're talking about the keto diet today, right? You eat foods high in fat, a little bit of protein. You cut carbs completely. Like any diet, it works because it finds a way to limit the number of calories you eat every day relative to what you would need to eat to maintain your weight. No magic beyond that. It accomplishes it by restricting carbs completely. And that last part is where we start to uncover the, the dark side of this diet, right? Because any diet that takes it to one extreme tends to show that most people can't stick to it. Often they end up gaining more weight after they quit the diet than they started. So my latest article kind of went into this. If you saw the newspaper yesterday, but I'm going to it today. A few issues with it. For one, the weight loss is an all-fat loss, especially in the beginning, right? It feeds our need for immediate gratification because you lose a, a fair number of water in the early going when you restrict carbs. The stored carbs known as glycogen in the muscle and liver are reduced. That's where that water retention comes from. When it falls, your scale weight goes down. So to the average person, it looks like it's working fast, but there's a difference between fat loss and weight loss, and actual fat loss takes a lot more time. And whereas most research will show aim for one pound of actual fat loss a week, that is sustainable, that translates to 50 pounds over the course of a year. So it's nothing to scoff at, right? And we want to rely on fat loss, not just scale weight loss, right? The other problem with it is most people aren't actually following it. Right? A real keto diet is 75% fat, total calories, next to no carbs, a little bit of protein. Most people overshoot the protein per day. That leads to protein being converted to glucose for energy, so you're not actually in ketosis, which is the premise of the diet. And nearly everyone slips up, right? They go out, they have some carbs, they have a piece of cake. That may still work in the long run because you're restricting calories, but it's not keto. <clears throat> Point three is if you're an athlete, take caution, right? Because your body prefers glucose during high-intensity activity. There's one study that showed low-carb dieters versus high-carb dieters on a Wingate challenge in the gym. The group that had more carbs had a much higher peak performance and recovery measurements. So if you're an athlete or you want to build muscle, probably stay away from keto right it's not ideal so where does that leave you what's the perfect diet well you don't need restri extreme restriction is kind of the point here and there's no one study that has conclusively said one diet's better than the other it's really up to you what your body handles best because the problem generally isn't the diet it's your consistency in following it over the long haul so if you can sustain a keto diet for a year then you go for it it should work for you. But if you know you want to have some fruit, want to have some fries or baked potato once in a while, then maybe you should reconsider. So I find the most effective way to change someone's eating is to see how they currently eat, make it a bit better, and then make adjustments over time so that they're continually making progress. So when you're ready, I can help you take the next step, five extra fat loss without fads. So if that's you, send me a direct message today. Drop two sizes to get on my next summer challenge.